stage. We're still in the book of uh, Colossians. And though we are going to go out of the book of Colossians, but it's the, the, the theme comes from uh, the verses that drew my attention in the book of Colossians. There are three verses uh, in the book of Colossians about the glory of God. Um, I am looking at two of them this morning, as you can see here. So we're going to talk about the glory of God and the promises of glory to us, the believers, this morning. So Colossians chapter 1, 27. To God's holy people, God willed or God chose to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. It's very encouraging to look at that because we discover the will of God for us. And if you pay attention, and we'll come back to the end of the message about uh, some of the expressions in these uh, verses, the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ and you, the hope of glory. So there's riches and the glory of God for us this morning. So we want first to talk about glory. So that's why it will probably be a two-part uh, message. Uh, this I, I'm going to spend more time on uh, the general uh, theme of the glory of God this morning. So what is the meaning of God's glory? What is the glory of God? God's glory, first of all, is a concept a bit like love. It's like we know something about it, but we cannot really define it fully. Uh, it's kind of one of these uh, rich, super rich uh, theme uh, that is difficult for us uh, with our finite mind to uh, describe or give a definition to something that is uh, infinite, like the glory of God that is so full. So I will give a, a definition, but it's uh, kind of a, uh, an incomplete and in uh, humility, we can only give this kind of uh, a definition. The glory of God is the invisible character or nature or attributes of God displayed in a visible or knowable way. We can know about it and we can see it. Uh, so that is the glory of God. When the, when the glory of God is talked about is something that God is showing to us about his nature, is revealing. Or uh, it is either something that, that was happening in events there or referred to some events of the past. Or sometimes it's just like uh, uh, about his majesty and his, uh, the fact that he is the creator, that he is eternal and that he has a, a beauty, uh, a infinite light uh, that cannot be measured or anything. So looking at some of the expression in the Bible about glory, you have some expression in the Old Testament. You have two of the main words in the Old Testament. One is uh, more emphasizing the beauty and the splendor, the, like the majesty of God. The other word is a kabod, it's uh, something we are uh, uh, familiar with. And it comes uh, 190 to 200 times in the Bible. And it's a very important term using uh, general terms, talking about glory in general, but also glory uh, um, in, in relation to God. And th the meaning of it is uh, uh, heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy like uh, um, it makes us think of something that is uh, riches, uh, important. Uh, it's heavy. It has, con it has a consistence. It has substance. It is very important. You cannot ignore it. It's heavy and important. It's the worth of it. And in the New Testament, you have another term that comes 150 times. That's the main terms. So we have more than 400 times the word glory in the Bible. Uh, that is not considering the, the, the words that derive from. These are main words about glory, but you have verbs, you have adjectives uh, you, uh, of that. So that's mu much more. So it points to us the importance of of the glory, the, the word glory. But this morning we want to focus on the, the glory of God, not only glory in general, but glory of God. And when we think of the glory of the Lord, we may think uh, light 
and which is correct also because it says uh, uh, the glory of the Lord shines over all the world, you know, things like that. So there is a light in the glory, like a, a brilliance. Uh, when the Lord passed in front of uh, Moses, then he saw a light uh, passing by, and it is too glorious to be seen by human eyes. So the glory of God declares also the, the majesty of God as a supreme ruler. It talks about his absolute uh, perfections, the, that he is God and he is absolute and his perfections. And it uh, emphasizes his unique uh, status. He is alone to be glorious like that. Nobody can be glorious like God. Uh, he stands alone, he's unique, and he's, he has a supreme rank and power, and his reputation, uh, it is, he is majesty, he is above uh, everything. So let's look at some uh, scriptures that declares these uh, beginning of the, the, the definitions that we have for the glory of God. First Chronicle 29:11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty, and then we, we go on uh, with this definition. We'll come back to this text a bit later. Be exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. And I think somebody says, thank you, Lord, for the birds this morning. I think Pastor Jennifer and thanks. And it is true that uh, you, you're just looking, sometimes hearing the birds, you, you feel the glory of the Lord. You go into nature and then you feel the glory, the beauty of nature, the rich variety of all the creation that we have around us. And g thinking that God created such a beautiful world to, for our pleasure is uh, really uh, overwhelming. The heavens declare the glory of God. You just think about the heavens. The, the, the beauty of the stars and everything that is and the sky above proclaim his handiwork. We can see that God has worked these things. So God's glory is also often mentioned in relation to uh, Egypt, the exodus, uh, the plagues, and the crossing of the Red Sea. It's often related. We have many, many texts declaring the glory of God, but completely looking back to the events uh, uh, taking place, to the, the deliverance of the people uh, of God uh, and Exodus and everything. Exodus 40 here, when the tabernacle was set up at Sinai, this is how God's presence was described. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Nobody could enter it. The glory of the Lord was filling the temple. I pray this morning that as you uh, look at the scripture this morning, the, there will be an impact on your heart, uh, thinking about you and your relationship to the Lord, your worship. You came here this morning to worship the Lord. How do you worship Him? How, how worthy is He of your worship? Who is He? Is He big enough to deserve your, wor your, your worship? How, how glorious is your God to yourself? I mean, you will all say, yes, he is. But is he really? By, by the, the way you live, by the way you entered into his presence, by the way you sang this morning, by the way you raised your hands and your hearts to him, by the way that you prepared yourself to come here, by your awareness of his glorious presence in the church, how many of us really believe that on Sunday, when you come to Lighthouse, because Lighthouse is your church, it could be any, any, any church that you would attend, that when you come here, the glory of the Lord is here. Amen. That you are entering, as soon as you put your feet in the lift, <laughs> this becomes a holy lift. When you enter into the lobby of Lighthouse, and there is a glass door that you can see the, the things, this is a glorious lobby. The lobby is part of the church. It's part of entering the presence of the Lord. So as soon as you enter the lobby, are you stopping fellowshipping, 
talking and showing pictures and having fun and telling all what you did last week and now you are switching into and you are now entering God's territory maybe we need a little bit more of that I don't know if you agree with me or not but I think that yes. we need to review our concept of we come to church to worship the glory of God I think we need to review that and rethink our entering into the church every Sunday morning. <clears throat> so here we say that when the temple was completed and Moses had followed all the instructions that he received on the mountain, the, according to the plan of God, when it was finished, the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. We read the same thing when Solomon built his temple years later. Also in the pillar of cloud, uh, we, we read how Moses declared that the glory of God was guiding his people. And Exodus chapter 16, verse 7 and 10 says, In the morning, this is Moses speaking to the people of God, telling them what they are going to see this morning, that particular morning. In the morning, this had never happened before. That was the first time they were going to witness that. In the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord. How would they see the glory of the Lord? They looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. What a wonderful first-time experience. It, it had never happened before, and Moses is telling them, God's glory is going to be seen by you people, by his people, and then this is how it's going to happen. The glory of the Lord has guided the people of God in two ways. First, by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by, by night. Imagine, without the presence of God, what would have happened to the people of God in the wilderness? Without the glory of the Lord being part of, of who they were, who they had become, God had called them, they were slaves in Egypt, God called them to make a people of his own. He called them and he says, we read in the Old Testament, it's not because they were so smart, not because they were big and they were strong and powerful, it's because of God's mercy. It's because God saw them and he loved them that he called them. So think about them and think about us. Apart from the presence of God, the people of God would have been lost. No directions, no objectives, no, no path to follow in the wilderness. And they could have never reached their destination. So the glory of God is very important to all of us to bring us to our destination, to where we are going, to what God has in store for us. They couldn't have reached their destination. So God not only gave them directions by His presence, because the, the glory of God is also a symbol of the presence of God. It's a symbol of directions, but it's more than that. Because it's more than just pointing. And someday, the, the pillar of cloud would lift and move. That meant, pack your bags, we're moving. And if all the people of Israel, the millions of people, imagine, would pack their suitcase, pack their tent, buy the, 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 the possessions, and would follow that glorious cloud. Imagine that. And how it is a symbol of God being present, God being in charge, God being holy, God leading his people. Even today we have that uh, expression uh, of, of the glory of God with us. God was gloriously present to provide. God blessed his people. God protected his people. God provided to his people. When they needed meat, he brought them the quails. When they needed water, he got water from the rock. And these are uh, manifestations of the glory of God. And we will see a little bit more just in the next uh, scriptures. Numbers 14. The Lord replied, Moses had uh, asked God to forgive the sin. This is just after the calf. Moses went down to the mountain and spent time with the Lord, received the, the, the law, the Ten Commandments, on stones, on tablets of stones, during this time. 
uh, Aaron, f uh, you know, under the peer pressure of the people and, you know, scared whatever influenced by them, he just built a, a calf, a golden calf. And then Moses pleaded with God because God was so angry that he was going to finish up and, you know, these people are not, not worthy. They are disobeying me. They are, you know, showing contempt to me. They are, uh, they are comparing my glory. Imagine the glory of God compared to a calf. Is God a calf? Is God made uh, like a, can be uh, compared to a statue of gold? Even if you put diamonds uh, for the eyes and uh, a mouth of diamonds, uh, they decorate your uh, piece of wood as much as you want. Is that going to become God? Is that going to be able to hear you, to take care of you, to guide you? So the Lord replied Moses' intercessions. I have forgiven them as you ask. Because Moses, and that tells us something about the power of prayer as well. So this afternoon when we meet for prayer, remember that. Moses pleaded that God would forgive the sin of his people. And God answered Moses, I have forgiven them as you asked. Isn't that encouraging? Yes. yes. So God hear our prayers. Nevertheless, as surely as I lived, and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, and yet have tempted me now these ten times, and have not obeyed me, not one of them will ever see the land I swore to their ancestors, no one who has treated me with contempt with, will ever see it. Only my servant Caleb, and we know Joshua, because they had a different spirit, a different uh, reverence unto God. They trusted the power of God. They believed and they expected the glory of God, the power of God, the majesty of God, the, the, the victory of God, to be what God had said he would be. But the people did not. So we, we learn something uh, uh, here, because to, to glorify God, God to be glorified, we should recognize who He is. We should recognize His holiness. We should recognize, you know the word kabod, the, the heaviness, the weightiness, the worth, how, how real, how important, how big He is. And otherwise, we cannot, uh, you know, uh, follow with him. He says, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I perform in Egypt and in the wilderness. And yet, they have shown contempt to him. And when, when I read a text like this, I'm, you know, and if we bring it to us, do we see some things that we need to correct in our lives? Because when we come to church and we hear the pastors preach every Sunday, the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is taking the Word of God, making it alive, bringing it to our hearts, and bringing conviction. And uh, the Word of God we read in Second uh, Timothy, that it is uh, useful for corrections, for rebuking, for correcting, and bringing back, you know, so that we will be transformed into uh, cor in a correct way, we, we will be living right. So here it says, have we seen the glory of God? Have you seen the glory of God? Raise your hands if you did. I think some of us don't know if we have seen the glory of God. And it's, it's okay, maybe we don't, uh, you don't understand the purpose of my question this morning. Have you seen the glory of God? Yes, if you are saved, you have seen the glory of God. If you have been born again and you have the word of God in, with you, you have the, you, you have the glory of, of the Lord with you. We'll come back to that. So it says here, Not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I perform in Egypt. All of us have experienced power. We have experienced blessing. We have exp ex experienced uh, deliverance, uh, answered prayers, over and over. 
And the longer we have been Christians, the more we have seen. Is that true? Is that logic? It's just logic what I'm saying. The longer you've been a Christian, the more you should have seen of the glory of the Lord. Okay. What has it produced in your life? Where are you at at the moment in your life? Have you become more respectful, more reverential of the things of the Lord? More broken, more humble before the Lord? More dependent of Him? More uh, worshipful of Him? Or have you developed some form of contempt? Because there's different degree in that. In carelessness and abandoning and uh, dependence on yourself and uh, lack of reverence. I'm just asking this question so that you can, with God, settle these questions. They are important. Because here we have a text that is very serious in nature and it can be applied to our life this morning. None of them who have seen my glory, none of them who have experienced my miracles in their life and yet have disobeyed me and yet have not shown respect for me and yet have not uh, have shown some uh, uh, contempt with me, they are not going to see the land of promise. Something went wrong and to the heart of these people. And same thing can happen because what you read in the Bible has been written for our instructions. You see this text that you read in the book of uh, Numbers is quoted in Corinthians, it's quoted in the book of Hebrews, it's part of the New Testament and it is written for us to go back and read and learn from them in our relationship with God. That's why the, the discovering the glory of the Lord is very important for us. Only my servant Caleb and Joshua. Oh, so who are you in that group of, of people? To glorify God, we should recognize His holiness and His weightiness. Someone said, holiness is the crowning attribute of God is the crowning glory of God's attribute. Holiness is the crowning glory of God's attribute. When you want to understand the, the glory of God, we have to go back to His uh, holiness because His holiness is what makes Him distinct completely from sinners, distinct from human being, His creation. He stands alone on that. There's a story, I don't have the text here, but in Leviticus chapter 10, there's a very tragic story. It's at the very beginning when the temple and the priesthood has been established in the Old Testament. And uh, two of the sons of the high priest Aaron, who are themselves uh, high uh, priests, Nadab and Abi, Abihu, or Abihu, I don't know, I just pronounce it in French, it's easier for me. They did not approach God with proper reverence and awareness of his divine glory and dignity. And you know what happened. This is a very d disturbing text in the Old Testament. They did not glorify the Lord, so they were consumed by fire from on high. And the Lord spoke to Aaron, the father, who was, you know, filled with sorrow because his son died. He says, I will be glorified. I will be glorified by those who come near me. I will be glorified by those who call by my name. I will be glorified by those who, who serve me. I will be glorified. So we need to understand that holiness is the crowning glory of God's attribute. If we want to apply it, we must understand the worth of God. How big is your God? How worthy is he? How holy is he? Um, this text in Leviticus shows us the seriousness. Think about it. It shows us something from God's point of view. How God uh, responds to our worship. It shows us the seriousness with which the Lord takes His own worship. The way we worship the Lord is important. Coming together with God's people to praise His name is a distinct privilege that we have. You know when we come on Sunday morning, we are blessed here in Lighthouse because the songs that you sang are songs that are doctrinally correct. 
they declare the Word of God, people have prayed to prepare it, and they always focus on Jesus and walking with the Lord and praising the Lord. And uh, this is not something that we should take lightly. But unfortunately, as some of the texts that we have been looking at, we, we take it lightly. We show it by our actions. Okay, I understand. I, I, will, I will step on some toes. I'm, I'm so sorry. You can be angry with me. Uh, we are late. You are never late for an appointment with a customer. You will never be late with an, an, an interview to get a new job. But you can be late here and, and, and so you can come late, you can disturb people who are praying, you can talk in the lobby when the service. Sometimes we, st we start the service, the room is about 25 person filled. Where are the people? And I, I, I'm sorry, I, I understand that some of you have had obligation while you were late. I'm not talking to you, I'm not blaming everybody for being late. But this is the hour of worship. How many other times do you have during the week than this hour and a half on Sunday morning where you come with God's people together to worship the Lord? How many other uh, opportunities? Like you have many other opportunities like that. You can do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No, most of us, that's the one time. We sing praises to the most holy and the God of glory. We sing praises to Him, but we are not there. We are not prepared. Even if you come out of the lift, 10 minutes, 15 minutes on the service, 20 minutes after the services begin, how can you be prepared to glorify God? How can you be prepared to even hear the Word of God with a heart that is humbled, broken, and ready to receive from the Holy Spirit what He wants to say. You are not here. You come late. Why? Just by pure negligence, by pure carelessness. I'm talking to those who by, by carelessness. And the funny thing is that people who are late are always the same people who are always late. So it's not like you this week had an accident on the road and you were late. That's, that's okay, that's understandable. Or some of you have uh, three children or four children and you are alone, your husband is on the, on the trip and then you, it was difficult to pack up all the things for the children for the day and get on the boat or get on the tram and then get on to church. Uh, we understand that. But for those of us, that we come to church week after week, always late. Oh, I miss the bus. Okay, I miss the bus. What can I do not to miss the bus? Oh, I'm always late. Uh, bec oh, bec I, I woke up too late. Okay, could I wake up a little bit earlier? Can I come here to this church prepared to meet the glory of the Lord? I mean, I'm sorry to speak like this. But if we don't, if the pastors cannot say that, who is going to say that to you? I'm sorry about that. It's not my intention to offend anybody. But it is a fact. Sometimes it's, it's, it's horrible to see. The, all the people are lined up in the back. Why are you lined up in the back? Why are you not in the first row here, your hands up and really connecting with the Lord? Why isn't it possible? To glorify God, we should recognize His holiness and recognize His weightiness. How heavy, how important, how big is God to you? God takes the seriousness of worship very, very uh, seriously, we can put it in this way. The glory of God often refers to praise and worship and proclaim His glory. Psalm 108, be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. You see, this, this, this movement, this exaltation, this joyful, it's like spontaneous. Whoever wrote this was in the mood. 
he was in the mood, his heart was right. You cannot write this kind of word without having it in your heart first. It, it's, it's, it's in you, you have it. First Chronicle 29, this is a wonderful time when the people of God were gathering money and gathering all sorts of goods and things, precious stones and things to bring for the building of the temple. And David expressed himself. Therefore David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Well, that just inspire me to want to jump and just do it right now why don't we do it brother Chris come here at the guitar and let's praise the Lord yes come on come on brother Chris yes come on in let's praise the Lord this morning any musician take your instruments jump on the drum on the cymbals let's sing to the Lord uh, we thank you O oh God our God and praise our glorious name just be spontaneous this morning. Do you want to do that? Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry I'm messing up my sermon this morning, but that's just what I feel to do. I feel to change this place into the, a place where the glory of God will be uh, celebrated this morning. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Amen. Are you ready to sing to the Lord? Amen! Amen. Okay, I have seen faces. I ask a question. After all I have said, are you ready to uh, praise the Lord? Yes. Please. Please, where is your heart this morning? Where is your heart of praise? Where is your great gratitude, your thankfulness, your excitement of the Lord, the joy of your salvation, the freshness of the Holy Spirit? The, the, the fact that we congregate this morning to just uh, uh, celebrate the power of God. Amen. Amen. Let me hear some good amen. 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 Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing whatever we sing. <laughs> Every praise. this morning. Let's mean it from our heart. Bless the Lord. Brother Andreas, can you put First Chronicle 29? We'll sing it again, brother Stephen. Stay there. First Chronicle chapter 29. Now we are awakened. Are we awakened? Yes. Okay. Let's sing. Let's let's read First Chronicle 29, the verse that we just read, slide seven.
No, before First that. Chronicles yeah. First Chronicles 29. Okay. Can we read it aloud? Yeah. <coughs> Can we read it together? Yeah. Yes. Can we mean it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do it together. Therefore, Therefore David, David bless, bless the, the Lord in the, the presence, presence of all the assembly. The assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the Your God of Israel. Your love is a greatness and a power and a glory and a victory and a majesty. For all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Hallelujah! Verse 11. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness. Greatness. Say greatness. Greatness. The power. Say power. power. And the glory. And the glory. And the victory. And the victory. And the majesty. And the majesty. Everything in heaven and in earth is? Yours. Yours. Hallelujah. Are you afraid for tomorrow? No. No. Yeah. Both riches and honor comes from? You. Amen. Amen. So, and now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sing hallelujah. This morning we want to declare your glory. Yes. Yes, Lord. We want to declare that to yes. us you are redeemed. Yes, Lord. You are glorious. Yes, Lord. Your name is glorious. Yes, Lord. Lord, we want to discover your splendor and your majesty yes. and to honor you and to give you back the glory that is due to your name, O oh Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh God, we want to exalt you. Yes, Lord. We want to uh, humble ourselves under your mighty hand yes, so Lord. that as we praise your glory, you are exalting us in due time as well, Lord. Yes, Lord. All riches and honor come from you, Lord. Yes. We don't have to fight for it. Lord, you give to your children even when they sleep. Yes. Lord, you are the one who bless our lives, Lord. You, yours is the kingdom. Lord, 
You are the King of Kings. Yes. You are exalted above everything, O oh Lord. Yes. All we need this morning, all we need as we come as a church, the church of God, as we want to see miracles, signs, and wonders, as we want to live a life that is passionate and burning of devotion for you, as we want to be excited, Lord, not bored, sad, uh, fruitless children. We want to be filled with fruitfulness so that is how the Father will be glorified. Hallelujah, that our lives our thoughts, our meditations, our actions, oh, yes. our singing, our, our, our church life, Lord, our coming together. Lord, that in everything you will be glorified as the purpose yes. of man. This is why you created us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. O oh God, O oh God, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, as we close this service this morning, Lord, we just want to celebrate the fact of your glory mm. yes. Yes, Lord. and we want to Peace, repent this morning yes. Yes. we need to repent this morning yes. all of us yes. <coughs> for being so worldly yes. for being so careless so lazy yes. for being so distracted yes. and come to the church of the living God unprepared Without the sense of holiness, without the sense of the glory of God, the greatness of the God that we say that we know and serve, but that by our actions and our attitudes, we prove that we don't. And Lord, it is sad when your people lose this fire. But Lord God, you are a God of mercy. You are the God of forgiveness. And as we pray and as we approach you this morning, you forgive us, you restore us, you purify us, you make us alive again, O oh God. And you lift us up to the place of being your servant, your priest, and your worshipers, O oh God. That our lives may be acceptable to God, Lord. That our lives may be, Lord, pleasant and an act of worship to the Lord, the glorious God. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh Lord. And Lord, just as David says, and now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Hallelujah. 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 Let this text sink in your heart. Copy it somewhere. Meditate on it and practice it what a wonderful declaration and a way to enter into the presence of the lord being aware of the riches of his glory the privilege that we have we are saved how many countless of millions of people in this world lives in darkness the veil is over their eyes they cannot see the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ they cannot see and recognize the glory of God they have changed the image of the glorious God into image of idols of animals and they worship all sorts of things except the glory of God they refuse to glory God to glorify God for who he is Instead, they have turned to other ways. This is the sinfulness of man. All men have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Well, Lord, you created man and women at your image and your likeness and for the purpose of worshiping you to glorify God because we carry in us especially that we are redeemed in Christ, we carry in us the image of God. We, this image should be a restored image, an image that uh, we carry together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Andreas, would you put on the screen the last slide, please? <coughs> hallelujah. Everyone who belongs to me, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed, yes, whom I made. 
Why are we been created? For his glory. Whom I created for my glory. But we have these treasures, the, the, the immeasurable light, the eternal light of God, the glory of God, and jars of clay in our bodily form, in, in our human nature, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. But God is being glorified when we live for Him and when we honor Him with our lives. As, as all of us reflect the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces, because the veil has fallen and now we can see the, the glory of God, we are becoming more like Him with ever-increasing glory by the Lord's Spirit. From glory to glory, that's our calling. That's how we are called to, to be, to live, to talk, to walk, and to worship in the church of God. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. And if this morning you visited this church and you're not sure that you belong to Jesus, that you are saved, then make your prayer this morning. Lord, save me. I believe in you. I want to be right because there is the riches of the glory of God yet to come. The hope of glory for all those who belong to Jesus Christ. We'll talk more about that in part two. But for this morning, just celebrate the glory of God in your life. Let your life be a celebration, your fellowship. You're coming to church next week or this afternoon. Come to church to celebrate the glory of God. Realize that the glory of God is already in you. And celebrate all the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Let's sing Amen. to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Andreas, to God be the glory.